Yellowstone National Park is one of the most scenic places in the country. However, for all of its beauty, it is also a ticking time bomb. The entire park sits in the collapsed caldera of a supervolcano. Lurking only a couple of miles beneath the surface are two massive magma chambers. Each day, they fill with more and more lava, putting pressure on the surface above. The last eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano was 640,000 years ago and was 2,500 times more powerful than the eruption of Mount St. Helens. What is most troubling, though, is that sometime in the future, this massive volcano will likely erupt again, causing an incredible amount of damage and destruction. Although it's highly unlikely that it will explode in our lifetimes, it will definitely affect the lives of hundreds of millions of people when it does. But what exactly will happen? How will society continue? Here are five things that will happen when the Yellowstone volcano erupts. The massive magma chambers sit very close to the surface. As the magma chambers slowly fill with lava, it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the rock and soil above. As the pressure builds, the ground on the surface starts to grow and bulge. In the past, the caldera in the park would grow by about two inches per year. However, over the last few years, that speed has increased to about eight inches per year, showing that the chamber is filling at a much faster pace. When the earth moves at such a quick pace, it shakes the ground above. This was seen in the case of Mount St. Helens in 1980. Just before this eruption, the magma chamber in the mountain started to fill, bulging the entire side of the mountain. At the same time, earthquakes were being recorded in the area on a regular basis. In the days leading up to the eruption, there were around four or five earthquakes every day that measured at least a 4.2 magnitude. When you consider the difference in scale between Mount St. Helens and the Yellowstone supervolcano, it gives reason to be concerned. The earthquakes leading up to the actual eruption have the potential to be major, somewhere in the realm of 8.0 to 9.0. This type of geological activity in the area would undoubtedly be catastrophic, potentially even causing the drying up of the various geysers. However, as there is no recorded data to base these predictions on, the only thing we can go on is a bit of speculation. In actuality, the majority of volcanoes do not eject lava, as is usually thought of with a volcanic eruption. Rather, they eject ash. Ash is a very fine mixture of rock, minerals, and glass that are expelled from a volcano during an eruption. Where we may see it as a very fine dust, the reality of it is, ash can be quite dangerous. So, when the Yellowstone volcano erupts, it will more than likely produce ash clouds that shoot into the air and fall for thousands of miles in each direction, depending on the wind. When the ash falls, it resembles something between a fine snow and a simple dust storm. The biggest danger to people is a prolonged exposure to the dangerous particles. As the composition is comprised partly of glass as well as other toxic materials, it is very dangerous to breathe in. Also, the sheer amount of ash predicted to fall is astonishing. After being shot miles into the air, conservative predictions have some areas seeing upwards of 30 feet of ash. In these areas, the odds of survival will be very slim. With feet of ash falling in nearly every direction, it would cover the food source of herbivores, driving them to new areas to graze. The carnivores would follow suit with their food sources gone. Trees and plants would not receive proper nourishment from the sun or from water. While the severe thick ash would only cover the surrounding states, it is estimated that a large eruption of Yellowstone could cover a massive portion of North America in ash, even as far away as somewhere like New York. As we talked about how much of the ash would fall in the surrounding areas, we did not talk about what would happen when the ash cloud gets too high. This is the area that has scientists most concerned. Due to the sheer size of the ash cloud predicted to be produced by the Yellowstone eruption, scientists believe it would reach the highest parts of our atmosphere. The particles of ash, being as fine as they are, would get caught in the jet stream, being transported to every part of the world. Additionally, the particles being in the less dense upper atmosphere would linger for years and years, falling back towards Earth at a snail's pace. As the ash continues to linger, the sun's light would become less and less intense, causing temperatures all across the world to start dropping. 
Depending on how much ash is released during the eruption, the temperature drop could last anywhere from a few years to a number of decades. The longer the ash lingers, the lower the temperatures drop. Should the temperatures drop low enough, it is very possible that another ice age could start. Such an event would have an impact on everything from wildlife to agriculture. While it is unlikely that this would be an extinction level event as far as humans are concerned, it would definitely claim many lives and impact the societies in which we live. Things like animal life and plant life can be very sensitive to fluctuation in temperatures. True, a short-term change wouldn't have a major effect, but it is a different story for a longer-lasting change. We, as humans, are more reliant on these things than we may realize. Should the delicate balance of plant or animal life be disturbed, the effect on humans would also be disturbed. Think about the agricultural industries across the world. All of these crops need just the right conditions to grow and survive. Without the proper sunlight or temperature, crops would wither and die. Even wild vegetation, which provides a valuable food source for all sorts of animals, would die. But the damage would go far beyond just the small plants and foliage. It would extend to larger plant life as well. Trees needing sunlight to survive would slowly wither as well. In terms of humanity, though, our diets would change greatly. As omnivores, creatures that eat both plants and meat, we would have a serious lack of plants to complete our diets. Much of our meat would even need to change. With fewer and fewer greens and less corn to feed our cows, pigs, or chickens, many of them would die as well. Even fish populations would dwindle as ash falls into the waters, changing the acidity to deadly levels. In short, the global food supply would either change or come dangerously close to being non-existent. With so many societies and cultures that rely on this delicate balance of plant life and animal life, there could be a human death toll in the billions due to starvation. For people who survive the global temperature drops and food shortages, they would need to deal with the economic effects from such an event. Entire industries, once booming and thriving, would disappear overnight. People who are already facing desperate situations due to the food shortages would be out of a job and left with no income. This would create a level of desperation that would put us face to face with the worst aspects of the human condition. Think about the eruption of the Icelandic, and I apologize again if I butcher this name, Eyjafjallajökull volcano back in 2010. In terms of volcanic eruptions, it was not even close to being the biggest. However, as the ash cloud produced from the eruption entered into the flight paths of commercial aircraft, it caused more than 100,000 flights to be grounded, stranding millions of people. This event occurred as a result of one ash cloud in one specific part of the world. Imagine the global economic effect it would have when the ash covers the entirety of the planet. Governments would struggle to keep order as people became desperate to live and survive. Rampant looting would make it near impossible for businesses to exist. Black markets would spring up, offering what used to be commonplace items. In short, the results would not be good. And it would likely forever change society as we know it. But there is no need to worry at this time. The true odds of an eruption of this caliber happening in our lifetime are slim. However, it's always fun to speculate. How crazy is it to think that such a beautiful place like Yellowstone National Park could be the center of a world-changing disaster? The scariest part of it all is that there is absolutely nothing that can be done to stop it. All we can do is prepare for the inevitable things that will happen as a result of an eruption and hope that it doesn't occur in our lifetime. Click the link on screen now to see another video of ours just like this one. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.